losses of one kind or another occur almost everywhere and their seeds are extremely nutritious. After all, grass seeds in the form of wheat and rice feed half the human world. Grass seeds also feed countless wild birds and in Australia an entire family, the grass finches, eats almost nothing else. But there is a catch. Grass seeds contain little moisture and birds that eat them need frequent access to water. This is especially true in the hotter and drier parts of northern Australia. Here any small desert water hole is visited throughout the day by a constant parade of small, lively, colourful birds, each needing to drink every hour or two. Grass finches also occur across Africa and tropical Asia, but they are especially well represented in Australia, where there are 18 native species. These birds are extremely popular among aviculturists around the world, and one species, the zebra finch, rivals the budgerigar and the canary as the world's most popular pet bird. Commonest and by far the most widespread of all Australian grass finches, the zebra finch occurs almost everywhere except the eastern mountains and coastline. It differs from most species in that there are obvious plumage differences between the sexes. The birds with orange cheek patches here are males, the others are females. Grass finches in general, and zebra finches in particular, are among the most sociable of birds, and often congregate in large flocks. But grass finches are more than just sociable. Like humans, most birds maintain a sort of personal space around them, seldom invaded except in courtship. Not so the grass finches, which habitually cuddle freely together in actual physical contact. The zebra finch is better adapted to desert conditions than any other grass finch. Even so, the birds suffer heat stress in exceptionally hot conditions and resort to gaping and seeking shelter in the shadiest spot available. Gaping produces its cooling effect by allowing evaporation from the moist inner surfaces of the mouth. The birds are reasonably safe in the shade from predators, but exposed when they must finally emerge to drink. Then they're usually nervous and wary. Hawks of almost any species are among the most important of the grass finch's predators. And the birds are instantly alert to the presence of any hawk patrolling overhead. This spotted harrier, for example, will certainly grab a zebra finch given half a chance. But this is one of the reasons grass finches gather in mobs. It's good tactics for small, defenseless birds to congregate in flocks. Any predator, thus overwhelmed by too many tempting targets, is quite likely to become too confused to carry out a successful strike.
Water is one factor that has changed profoundly in the zebra finches world since European settlement. Now, artificial water sources in the form of bores and dams are scattered across the landscape, including places where water was seldom available before. These, of course, are built by station owners for watering their cattle and other livestock. But there's plenty to spare for small, thirsty birds. The result has been that grass finches may now be far more widespread, though not necessarily any more numerous, than they ever were before. Now, few stock dams and boars are without their associated flock of grass finches, coming frequently to drink. Unlike the zebra finch, the long-tailed finch is usually most common in dry open woodland and its distribution is restricted to the tropical north, mainly west of the Gulf of Carpentaria and across to the Kimberley. Like the zebra finch, it needs convenient access to water and it too seems to have profited from the proliferation of boars and stock dams across the north. A frequent companion of the long-tailed finch at such boars is the very similar masked finch. Much alike in distribution, the two species very often occur together, though their habitat preferences are not exactly identical. Masked finches tend to outnumber long tails in grassland, the other way around, in open woodland. Perhaps the easiest way of telling them apart is to note the warm brown head of the masked finch, contrasting with the long tail's blue-gray head. Both birds are adept at another special characteristic that emerges when the birds come to drink. Almost all birds drink by scooping water into the open bill, then tilting the head back to swallow it. The typical grass finch style, however, is very different. These birds dip their bills and pump it up, like sucking through a straw. The reason for the difference is unknown, but a plausible suggestion has it that the grass finch technique is much quicker and therefore safer. But the long-tailed finch in particular adds to this a further advantage in its extraordinary agility it can easily reach even the most inconvenient sources of water, stretching down from the most precarious of perches. Long-tailed finches tend to harvest their grass seeds directly from the stem during the wet season but they feed largely on the ground at other times. The distinction seems trivial, but looms large in the lives of grass finches. Especially in arid regions where the ground is both dry and open, fallen seed is available more or less at any time. But unripe seed on the stem can be harvested only at the appropriate season. Grass finches of one kind or another occupy virtually all of the varied landscapes of Australia and the interior scrubs of central Queensland are no exception. Here lives the black-throated finch, very similar to the long-tailed finch in general appearance 
though it lacks the long pointed tail. The black-throated finch exhibits to an extreme degree a trait conspicuous among grass finches but otherwise not common among songbirds. Grass finches mate for life. The pair bond is permanent, extremely close and obvious in every aspect of their behavior together. This endearing trait is one of the features that make the grass finches so popular among aviculturists around the world. But the black-throated finch is exceptional even within this company of devoted couples. In this species, the pair bond is so close that it is quite likely that the two members of this particular pair will never be further apart than this throughout their entire lives. This is the nest of a double-barred finch, a common bird in scrubby woodlands over much of northern and eastern Australia. A typical grass finch nest is a roughly spherical structure of woven grasses lined with feathers and placed in a grass tussock or a low bush. Both parents are involved in construction, though the female usually does the building while the male merely fetches materials. Grass finches lay plain white eggs, usually four or five in a clutch. Both parents incubate them in alternate shifts of about an hour, and both spend the night in the nest together. The chicks are fed mainly on seeds, which the parent bird stores in its crop and regurgitates for its brood. Half-grown grass finch chicks are a sight only a parent could love. But they do show at least one interesting characteristic. Baby grass finches have strongly patterned mouth linings, and these strong markings serve to guide the parent's feeding response in the gloom of the nest interior. In some species, such as the Gouldian finch, these markings are so conspicuous as to seem almost luminous. As they approach fledging, the birds look not a great deal unlike their parents, although much scruffier. 